Welcome to Arise, Shine, for the Light has Come. I'm Minister Michael Kernan, bringing to you a full gospel Christ teaching ministry, which is committed to the uncompromised Word of God, allowing God's people to come out of darkness and into His marvelous light. But first, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, open the ears of the people who are listening to this broadcast so that they might understand with their hearts and be converted. And I pray against all hindering spirits that might try to prohibit this glorious gospel from going down in their heart, that it might be effectual. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Today our subject is all is well with my soul. All is well with my soul. I've seen people handle end-of-life care with such grace and peace, you'd never know their predicament. But on the other hand, some people handle each situation panic-stricken as if it's a matter of life and death. There is an inner peace that comforts our soul that defies all of man's logic, where our circumstances are irrelevant. I can remember a time in my life when I would have panic attacks and for no apparent reason. I also had no equilibrium in how I treated others. My good nature could turn cynical in a moment's notice. All my situations seemed so bleak and hopeless no matter how I dressed them. Everything in my life seemed unfinished. When I was in the world, when I was a sinner, when I, when I just got to the point where I, I couldn't go forward, I couldn't go backward, I couldn't do nothing. Everything in my life seemed like it was unfinished business. There is a saying that says, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. It's not the things that we have to endure that causes the turmoil, but the way we handle it is where the trouble lies. This is an inside job of the heart that convinces us that everything is going to be all right. This world is going through its death throes. This world is going through its death throes. Everything seems so uncertain, and we can't count on anything or anybody. But thanks be to God, we can be in this world, but not of it. We can be in this world, but not of it. Hallelujah. When we're subject to the blood covenant of promises, when we're subject to the blood covenant of promises, they're subject to us. This world is no longer our home because our hearts reside in glory. My heart resides in glory. Hallelujah. And I'll explain that. This fleshly existence is but for a moment where our heart is being grounded into the likeness, where our heart is being groomed into the likeness of God to last through eternity. Hallelujah. God is continually breathing life into my living soul, which once was dead and without hope in this world. I know that I have gone from death unto life, and no one can convince me otherwise. I know that I have gone from death unto life, and there ain't no one, hallelujah, that can convince me otherwise of this, of this fact. I know it's happened. People, you know, these, these, these scientists and these, these uh, theologians, uh, so-called theologians, I, I guess they call themselves theologians, uh, uh, these uh, people that, that they, uh, they don't believe in God and they want to debate it all the time. You know, they, they want to debate. How are you going to convince me that God hasn't done a work in my heart? It's not going to happen. You can't convince me that. You can't convince that I have a conversation with my Heavenly Father whenever I need to touch the throne of grace for myself. You know, just because you don't experience it, doesn't mean that I'm not. Hallelujah. I've made myself ready. I made myself accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. We got in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Our body came with sin in this flesh. Hallelujah. It came with it from our first father's transgressions. We find that in Genesis, the first chapter. Uh, excuse me, the third chapter. Adam fell. And all of mankind was in Adam when he fell. And we came bound with the sin in the flesh, which afflicted our heart and this world as we became more and more. We embraced this world as a child. We just, it's all we knew. You know, my parents didn't teach me all this. I had to find this out the hard way, the old-fashioned way. I had to go out there and scrape my knuckles and get my nose bloodied and, 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 and intermingle with this world and my heart. The spirit of my inner man got darker and darker and darker. But thanks be to God, he didn't leave us like this. Hallelujah. Through the, 
through the sacrifice on the cross of Christ, by faith in what he did, my soul man now is alive. My sin in the flesh was crucified with Christ. My, my body is now a temple of my, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And now that my soul is alive, my flesh is crucified, I decided to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. My heart is in glory and he's in me. Thank you, Jesus. I am one with the Spirit of the living God. All is well with my soul. I don't care what the situation brings. All I got to do is pray and talk to God, and he'll tell me, I've got you. I've got you. Don't worry about that. We're going to Leviticus 26. Oh, yeah, the Old Testament. We're going back to the law of Moses here. Leviticus 26, 17 through 19. And I will set my face against you. God is talking here to the church. I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then will I punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power. Hallelujah. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. God is going to break the pride of your iron. That's what he had to do to me when I was still in the world. He, and, he, and he's talking to the church. You know, the church now, let's, 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 let's quantify this. The church is the blood-washed ones, hallelujah, that are make, making themselves ready, that have committed to the word of God, that have got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The congregation, the ones sitting in the back row of the pew, wondering if this is really real. This here is what God ultimately is talking to. Because when he says, I'll break the pipe, the pride of your power. You've not, you've not been accepted in the beloved yet. So you need to come to a point where God, when he breaks you, you start responding to it by saying, Lord, I can't live this life without your help. And he'll say, good, now come, come, come forward. Hallelujah. We're going to go to Leviticus 26. We're going to go to 36 and 37. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their heart in the land of their enemies. And the sound of a shaking leaf shall chase them. A shaking leaf shall chase them. And they, and they shall flee as fleeth from a sword. And they shall fall when none pursueth. They got fear. God has put fear into your heart. Because you know what? You got to embrace this word completely. And they shall fall when none, they shall fall upon one another as it were before a sword when none pursueth. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. God's going to tell you, you know what? You can't do this by yourself. This is done through the cross. This is done through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is done through God's holy power. You're not going to get this done by following the law of Moses. You can't do this through good works. you got to do this through God's sacrifice, through the cross, hallelujah. And all of it leads to one person. His name is Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the answer for man's problems. And all is well with my soul because I have embraced Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I call him Lord now, hallelujah. I call Jesus Lord, thank you, Jesus. Jesus was put on the cross by God, hallelujah, put the sins of the world on Jesus, died our death, went down to hell for us, rose victoriously because death could not contain him, hallelujah, left our sins down there, rose victoriously and is now risen, hallelujah, and is at the right hand of God. And God, thank you Jesus, wants to now give us of his spirit, Christ before Jesus wants to give us of his Holy Spirit, the victorious one, the anointed one inside me. It's not me doing this life. It's not me living it, but being obedient to the spirit that's within me. Romans 8 and 14, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. All is well with my soul. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to Hebrews now. And you see here, God wants to break the pride of your power. We got to be a broken vessel. And you're going, why am I going through all this, Lord? You know what? 
You can't get it done under your own power. We can only get it done through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to now, there's some chastising that's going to happen. The minute you come to the Lord, you're going to wind up realizing, you know what? This, is a, this stuff is real. This stuff is actually happening. Hebrews 12 and 5. Despise not the chastising of the Lord. Despise it not. And have ye forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children? My son, despise not the chastising of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastises and scourges every son whom he receives. And I'll tell you what, when you get sure enough saved, you're going to think, man, God's got no time to spend with anybody else. He's spending all the time on me. <laughs> I'm not getting away with nothing. Thank you, Jesus. But that's okay. That's the, he's, he's spending the time to clean us up. Thank you, Jesus. If he endure chastising, God will deal with you as with sons. I like that part. If you endure chastising, you get to the other side of the whooping. God is going to deal with you as with a son. He's going to talk to you. He's going to walk with you. He's going to share the, the glory of the richness of his heavenly wisdom. Hallelujah. Tell you how to navigate this world and the devil's subtility. For what son is he whom the father chastises not? But if he be without chastisement, whereof are all partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. A bastard is not a good thing. It means that the devil is your father. You don't want to be there. You want to be with the father of lights. Furthermore, we had fathers of our flesh, our worldly fathers, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. We were, we were in subjection unto them for a season. Shall we much neither be in Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastise us after their own pleasure. But he, God, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastising for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. It says, you know what? It doesn't seem to be all that fun right now. But it seems to be grievous. But afterwards, after you come out of the chastising phase, there is a phase of chastisement because he's breaking us from all those bad habits, letting us know this is not my child. You got to walk away from that unrighteousness and come into my fullness. All is well with my soul. Why is that? I have got out of the chastising phase and I am now sweetly saved. And when the Holy Spirit tells me something, I obey. Because I know when I go past his command, and it's a command. You'll see throughout the Bible, Jesus says, if you do what I command you, these are not suggestions. This is life. Just like Adam was commanded to obey God in the garden. And when he disobeyed, he fell. And he didn't just fall. He fell. All of mankind fell, which was inside Adam. That was our fall, too. We were inside Adam when he fell. And if we do what God commands us, we got a blessing coming. Oh, the devil's going to come hard. That's okay. Let, let's go to a... You're going to find the devil comes against you to try to convince you, oh, this life is too hard. It's too austere. You can't live this life. I've heard preachers preach that from their pulpit. Oh, you, you can't live holiness for two seconds. Only God can live holy. I'm like, the same spirit that was in Jesus Christ is in me. How can I not live holy? How can I not live this life? That How can, how can Jesus Christ sacrifice on the cross not negate Adam's fall in the garden? I will never know. They're calling God, as far as I'm concerned, a lie. First Peter 4, 1 and 2. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, and he sure enough suffered, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time to the flesh, to the lust of men, but to the will of God. So when you're going through trials and tribulations, and it says that you're, you, we're to arm ourselves with, likewise with the same mind, we just got to put our face 
to the millstone and get it done. Just let it grind. Let it grind. You're going to get it done. And you're going to say, Lord, without you I can do nothing, but with you I can do all things. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to tell you a little testimony about my week, about my suffering in the flesh. I'm 51. I've been going through this for, for oh, I don't know, 30, 34 some odd years. You know, God, God uh, lowered the boom on me when I was 17. I didn't get saved until I was 31. There's a lot of misery in between 17 and 31. I tell you what, this is my week. I had a raccoon in my backyard, a mama raccoon. I had to trap, a live trap, and release into the wilderness. But I had to trap four of her kids first. You know, you're thinking, well, that's not too bad. Well, okay. Monday I find out I got to have a tooth. A I got a bad tooth. So I got to have my first what you would call, uh, what is that, a root canal. Oh, that was no fun. And I'm still, still going through this. I got to have it capped and, you know, shell out $1,600. And, and, then, and then all the other things that come against me on a weekly basis. So, I mean, you go, we're going through things. And you know what? I got a peace now. Thank you, Jesus. I've, I'm, I'm now walking into the fullness of God. I see what the, the, the apostles and the, and, the, and the prophets of old, they went through all those horrible, horrible afflictions and trials and scourgings and mockings from their peers and all these different things we go through on a, on a daily, weekly basis. I can remember weeks in my past that seemed like lifetimes, entire lifetimes. But thank, thanks be to God, all is well with my soul. I'm going through hell in this life, but I know that it's not in my heart no more. Thank you, Jesus. That is a powerful, powerful testimony. Let's go to 2 Peter 1, 2 through 9. 2 Peter 1, 2 through 9. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. According to his, his divine power, the Holy Spirit, had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us unto glory and virtue. I want to talk on knowledge for a second. Knowledge. When you read this Bible, you're getting godly knowledge. You're getting godly information. Good thing. Now, wisdom is the practical application of godly knowledge. You're only going to get wisdom through trial and tribulation. You're only going to get wisdom through a, a revelation from God's Holy Spirit. That's how you get a wisdom. And our understanding is just doing it. You're not going to get no benefits from this book. You're not going to get no benefits from the Holy Spirit, from the Word or from the Spirit, until you start living this life. And st you step out by faith and you say, I don't care what my friends say. I don't care what my neighbors, my coworkers. I'm going to live this life now. Thank you, Jesus. And you're going to see God move mountains. You're going to see God move hills and valleys. Everything's going to be the same. Jesus Christ, hallelujah, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're not going to be on that hellish roller coaster ride, going up nice and slow and then screaming down and having white knuckles and screaming and holler and terrified for the, for the next 30 seconds or two minutes, however long that hellish roller coaster ride is. You're going to be on a nice, smooth plane. Hallelujah. All is well with my soul. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. God has called us unto glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. We're going to be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, which is love. If these things be in you and abound, they just well up. Abound means they, you can't contain it. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged 
from his old sins. We're being purged from our old sins. Now they're teaching you can sin all you want. Old, present, and future sins, and it doesn't matter. It's just a big house party. You know what? God's not going to leave me like I was. I wasn't long for this world. If God would have left me like I was, I was not long for this world. I was headed for destruction, and I know that. And God pulled me out. He broke me. He broke the pride of my power. Hallelujah. He broke my will to live this life under my own terms. And then after I became humble and obedient to what he had in mind for my life to look like, hallelujah, he had a pattern in mind for my life. And he said, this is my son. Now walk in it. And I had to get with the program. Thank you, Jesus. I couldn't do it under my own power. Uh, let, me, let me point out something. You look at faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge. These things, temperance, patience, godly kindness, brotherly kindness, godliness. These things you cannot do under your own power. You need the word. You need the spirit of the living God. And that is Jesus Christ on the cross, crucified for you, risen again, now he is Christ Jesus. Without him, you can do nothing. You'll see that in St. John 15 and 5. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that on the screen. I'm not going to turn there right now. Saint, let, let, yeah, let's turn there. I haven't read that scripture in a long time. St. John, St. John 15 and 5. I am the vine. And ye are the branches. Don't get it the other way around. Jesus, the nourishment comes through Jesus. Hallelujah. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him. Again, our spiritual baptism. My heart is in him, and he's in me. I'm in him, and he's in me. He says it several times throughout the Bible. Without this, without this knowledge, without this wisdom, without this understanding, that I just showed you, that, that, that revelation of God, you won't even know what this means. He that abideth in me and I in him, that's the spiritual baptism, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And he is expecting fruit from you. With, for without me, you can do nothing. That means you can't live after the law of Moses. You can't do this, do that, do this, do that. Now they're using psychology. Nothing wrong with psychology. Okay? What they're saying is good, but you're not going to get it done without the cross. They're leading you away from the cross. you got to stick with the Bible. What they're saying many times is good things, but how are you going to do that under your own power? God said, you can't get it done. Jesus said, without me, you cannot do this. You cannot live this life. We need the word. We need the daily nourishment of God's word, constantly washing us in the water of the word. Ephesians 5 and 26, the washing of water by the word and the constant indwelling of his Holy Spirit. You need the baptism of God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalms 103 now. Psalms 103. Okay, it's coming up any minute now. It was hiding from me. <laughs> Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is a Psalm of David here. Praising God for the glorious work that he did in David's heart. David messed up many times, but he always had godly sorrow. That's what you're going to need. You want to call yourself a Christian, you need godly sorrow, which works repentance unto salvation. Let's go there. I'm not going to skip over that. That is way too important, especially when they're teaching you can sin all you want, and they're teaching you to be reprobate. I, I, I said it, and I'm glad. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. When you're sorry you got saved in the first place, are you really saved? Oh, you want to be out there mixing and mingling with the world again? Are you really saved? You might as well be out there doing it. 
You know, when you're in the church house thinking about something other than God on a Sunday morning, you're thinking about, oh, geez, I wish I was somewhere else. Are you really saved? You got to get with the program. You got to live this life. And God's going to do a work in your heart. When you let go, God will fill you with the Spirit. You got to let go of pride. You got to let go of self. When you let go of self, God will fill you with the Spirit. But self and the Spirit will not dwell in unity. God is not going to share crop you with you. No, no. I've given myself away. This is what you do. You give yourself to the Lord, and you call him Lord because you want him to be just that, Lord of your life. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Get this word, Lord. You're calling him Lord. You're calling him Master. You're calling him your Master. Hallelujah. You're saying, have your way, Lord. Have your way. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. If you go to Psalm 50, 50, 53, you're going to see that he took on our diseases. Hallelujah. By his stripes we are healed. As much as I have a right to offer you salvation, I have a right to offer you his healing. Hallelujah. Yes, I do. Yet not I, but Christ which dwells within me who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Hallelujah. God has drawn us with loving kindness and tender mercies, not with the back of his hand, but with love and kindness. He's driving that hell out of your heart for a reason. So you will have this loving kindness and tender mercies. You're going to find that these attributes in God's heart are going to start welling up in yours and you're going to treat others the way you want to be treated in spite of who they are. It is who you are now. My old man didn't have that nearly in him. He had a stony, hellish heart and I'm so glad he is in the grave. I'm no longer ashamed of who I used to be because that man has been crucified on the cross of Christ. I am now a new creation who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. The Lord executeth righteousness and a judgment upon all that are oppressed. He maketh known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he always keep his anger forever. He had not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Hallelujah. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are but dust. For as for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall remember it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments and do them. We keep his covenant. What is his covenant? Real simple. Love. You love God and you love mankind. Hallelujah. And that is not an easy thing to do when the devil's coming against you, when God's chastising you from, from, to try to keep you from committing those vile acts that you used to do when you're in the world. He's trying to drive that hell out of your heart for eternity. Thank you, Jesus. All is well with my soul. I've already been through the, the, the mill. I've already been through, you know, the, the ups and downs and the valleys and the peaks and all the, the snotting and the crying and, oh, Lord, where are you? I've already been through all that mess. And I've come to a point where I'm standing on God's word. And his Holy Spirit will stand up in your heart and be Lord of your life and tell you things like, I've got you. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. I've got you. Not that long ago, a few years back, the Lord told me, you're not a part of this economy. You're a part of my economy. Don't worry about it. Go forward in victory. Hallelujah. And I, that's, that's the life for me. 
That's my life now. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go to Proverbs. I'm going to go to Proverbs 3. I'm going to Proverbs 3. I'm going to start at 11. My son, despise not the chastising of the Lord, neither be weary, weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, get that word, loves, whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father and the son whom he, and he delighteth. And I, that, I like that one scripture that says, he will eventually deal with you as with a son. Hallelujah. He's going to deal with you as a son. When you get through the, 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 the moping and the groping and come to the realization, you know what? God has definitely got my best intentions in mind. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Again, wisdom, practical application of godly knowledge. And our understanding is getting it done. Hallelujah. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst be desired cannot be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. That's, that's Ephesians 2 and 14. Jesus is our peace, who had broken down the middle wall partition. That middle wall partition was sin in the flesh. He broke that down and gave us himself. I'm in him, and he's in me. My soul is alive and grateful, and I am being led by the Spirit of the living God. My body now is a temple. Hallelujah. With all rights and privileges, including healing. I'm going through stuff in this life. But you know what? These trials, they, they're not as hot as they used to be. They're not as full of anguish as they used to be. Thank you, Jesus. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let not the... Depart from thy eyes, keep sound wisdom and discretion, so there should be life unto thy soul and grace about thy neck. When thou shalt walk, thou shalt not when thou shalt walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou lieth down, thou shalt not be afraid, yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. That's what I wanted to get to. 24. When thou liest down, thy sweet that thy sleep shall be sweet. Thy sleep shall be sweet. <laughs> it's, it's almost a tongue twister to me. But I got to testify now. It's, I'm, when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. I had a friend I worked with for many years. I, I generally liked the guy. He was humble. He was meek. He was nice. He was fun to be around. He was funny. He was witty. The one of the night, he was about seven years older than me. I was a union contractor, a uh, carpenter. I worked with him on several jobs. And we used to have a, a break in the morning. About 9.30 or 10 o'clock, we had a break before we had lunch break. So you had two breaks during the day. And we'd sit down, and we'd get to know each other, and we'd, we'd rattle on and talk. And, you know, he was, he was a good friend of mine. And one day... He, 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 lowered, he lowered the boom on me by, by telling me, you know, I, I haven't slept in about 20 years. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I, I haven't had sleep. I mean, I, I, I stay awake all night long. I, I, I just don't get no rest at night. And I said, well, what are you doing? And he said, well, I've, I've been to this doctor and that doctor and this doctor. And I mean, he went through the whole business. And I got excited. I'm thinking, this is my opportunity to testify to him. I mean, I used to wear religious shirts that said Jesus this and that, and no one ever really talked to me about it. But this time I testified to him and told him about Jesus, and I was all excited and told him he can help you, and, and I went through this whole spiel, and, 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 and finally he just kind of waved me off like, you know, like, what are you doing? I, I don't want to hear this stuff. And he, he, was, he was mad at me. I mean, his, 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 his good nature turned vile against me. And he was just like, you know, like, I, I don't want to hear that stuff. And, and he, he never treated me the same after that. The man never even liked talking to me after that. You know, I used to sit down with him after that. And he'd, he'd always give me this disgusting look like, 
What are you doing here? You know, and, and, and several times after that. What's this, what's this story leading to? I, I mean, I like Paul. Paul was a good friend of mine. He committed suicide. Paul committed suicide. He finally gave up on life. This is no joke. This life is no joke. He took, the man took his life. And I know four people from that company, that union company, they were all making the De Niro's back in the day. You know, this is early 2000s. We were all making good bread. You know, 40, 50, 60,000 a year was nothing, was not uncommon. You know, it's not like that now. You got, I mean, it's, it's a lot harder now to make that kind of money through the union. But I tell you what, he, 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 he gave up. He gave up. I, I showed him a way out, and he refused it. The devil is not playing games here. That's what I'm trying to get down into your spirit. This is no joke. At first, I naively thought this things, everything would get better. I first naively thought that everything would get better, but the opposite happened. The, abrasis, the, the abrasiveness of this world picked up steam like a locomotive. The devil came against me with everything he had. And the world, the sinners, he puts his spirit into sinners, and he sicks them on you like dogs. And you're like, wow, did this get, did this, this got really hard and austere. The life, I mean, it just comes against you and pounds you and pounds you and pounds you. When you're sure enough a child of God, the devil is going to come against you because he's no longer in your heart. He's no longer. He's been evicted. And he knows you're going the way of holiness. You're going to Jesus. You're going to get the victory. And eventually, you're going to be able to put your foot on his neck and walk in complete victory. And he's not going to stand back and take it. No. He's not going to be used for a road map. I'll tell a, a, a place, man. I'll tell you that right now. Being broken is the most difficult process of all. When you first come, you're broken. God is destroying the pleasure of sin, so we will be reviled by it. God is destroying the pleasure of sin, so we will be reviled by it. Also, he is serving us notice that we will not be whole without his divine intervention. Again, I read... And John 15 and 5, without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus Christ, nothing's going to happen. You can go to these so-called Christian counselors, and they're going to give you a whole book of things to do. You're not going to get it done with your own power. Nothing wrong with what they're saying. Nothing wrong with what the law of Moses said. But the problem is, you're going to do it with your own power. It's not going to happen. That's why Jesus came to give us the victory. Hallelujah. Otherwise, Christ died in vain, right? <clears throat> he also served us notice that we will not be whole without his divine intervention. And don't expect the devil to lie down and let you walk on him just because you decided this place is no longer your home. He, oh, he's coming. He's coming for you. And if you, if you have a big God, you will have a small devil. Let this sink down. If you have a big God, you will have a small devil. But if you have a small God, you're going to have a big devil. You're going to have a big problem. You're going to have the joy of the Lord not be your strength, and the devil's going to come against you with everything you got. The joy of the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit living out his life inside of you. Hallelujah. Being Lord of your life. We're calling Jesus Christ Lord, we're saying, take control. It's not about me. I have literally given myself away. Let's go there. Let's see if I can find it. 2 Corinthians. Or is it 1 Corinthians? I'll find out here. First, First Corinthians 6 and 19. First Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple? It's a temple now. It's no longer sinful flesh. It's a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. I'm not my own anymore. I can't just do whatever I want. Many times God's telling me, don't do this, don't do that. And it's, it's things about purchasing. 
He's, he's taking covetousness out of my heart now and showing me, you know what? I am Lord. You're not your own anymore. You can't just do whatever you want without my permission. He's taking covetousness right now out of my heart. I say it all the time. When that thing in your character is not like God and he says, turn it loose and you hang on to it, you're going to stay right there. And you're belly aching, and you're whining, and your grimy tears lapping under your chin, your knuckles gra dragging on the asphalt. You know, oh, woe is me. No, turn it loose, and you're going to see God. You're going to see God bless your everything. All is well with my soul, and it's done for a reason. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm God with the program. If you have a big God, you will have a small devil. And when you have a big God, you're going to call him Lord, and he will lord over your life. But if you have a small God, you will have a big devil, and you're going to have a big problem at that point. It may take a while for this to sink in, but be thankful that the damage is no longer on the inside where your heart was languishing. But on the outside, where the world is continuing to rampage like God isn't even there. Oh, yeah. They're continuing. They're, they're you know, boogie-woogie, get down, all this other stuff. You know, they're, 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 they're acting like God isn't even there. We have simply become more sensitive to our surroundings and how dark this world actually is. When you first get saved, you realize, man, I was like that? I wasn't like that. Was I like that? So you got this little debate going on within yourself, this little conflict going, I wasn't that bad. Oh, yes, you were. I know I was. I was miserable. And for a reason. Even my worldly friends didn't want to hang around me no more. <laughs> it's only It only becomes dark after we've seen the light of Christ abounding in our heart. It only becomes dark, the world, after we have seen the light of Christ abounding in our heart. Instead of a train wreck around every bend, we have the peace of God to spiritually discern our corrective course of action. I'm going to read that again. Instead of our train wreck around every bend, we have the peace of God to spiritually discern a corrective course of action. Thank you, Jesus. He will tell you before ahead of time, what needs to be done. And it's up to you to do it. He won't force his will upon you. He'll, he'll point it out. And through, through trials and tribulations, you're going to find out he's a sharpshooter. He knows exactly what's going to happen. Instead of acting like a chicken with her head cut off, the world will marvel at the coolness and serenity in which we deal with every situation. They're going to marvel. And they're going to come up to you. I've actually had one person come up to me and say, you know, you seem like a pretty happy person. How do you do it? How do you deal with this world? And I testified about Jesus. This, this, uh, this sinner, this man that, um, um, and I just assume he was a sinner because he didn't confess Christ to me right then and there. He had a big old smile on his face. And he said, thank you. He, want, he needed to hear that. He needed to hear that there was victory. Hallelujah. Because they're sure, enough, they're sure enough watching. They're sure enough watching. I had a friend of mine. I, I testified to him for years about all the things that I was going through and about my love for the Lord and this and that. He was watching. All those years, he was watching. Hallelujah. Just as iron sharpens iron, God is sharpening my spirit to be a surgeon with the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. And he's sharpening yours. If you get with the program, just as in medical school, many would-be doc doctors get weeded out along the way. The seemingly endless years of correction, combined with an austere life of study, many wonder if it will ever end. It's a long process to get where I'm at. But when it does, you'll have a foundation set in stone. Of course, the one I'm speaking of is in the spirit, and not in the flesh, where the soul will benefit from the peaceable fruits of God's correction. All is well with my soul. Hallelujah. All is well with my soul. We're going to go to Romans 5. Romans 5. We're going to start at 1. 
Therefore, being justified by faith, it all starts with faith. Believing what God has done. Believing the word from beginning to end. And that includes Genesis. A lot of people say, oh, the flood never happened. This, You know what? God said it happened. And God, if you, if you would see the things that I have seen in my life, you would know for a fact God can do anything. Here's, here's a miracle. You say, well, it didn't actually happen. It was just a vision. Nonsense. It happened. I seen it in a vision. When I was six years old, I sure enough had the Holy Ghost. And I was, I was praying for people. They were getting healed. It was, it was amazing. The, the childlike faith, childlike faith is the most awesome thing you will ever experience. My goal in my life is to become that six-year-old boy again during this life. What, I ha what time I have left, all I want is to become that six-year-old boy one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Everything I prayed for happened. It was amazing. And I said to myself one time, I, I want to pray to see a mountain be removed. They read it in the Bible. It can happen. I believe it. So God quickly came to me and said, don't. He didn't say that I couldn't. He said, don't. So he gave me a vision. And in this vision, I seen a mountain, a gorgeous mountain in front of me. And he said, no, pray to remove it. So I prayed, mountain be removed. And it just vanished. What was left behind? This was the thing that struck me the most incredible about the mountain be removed. It wasn't a gravel pit. It didn't look like, you know, a bunch of earth movers came and scraped the ground and this lifeless. No, it was a valley. It had a stream in it. It had plants. It had flowers. It had grass. It was like the mountain was never there. When God does a miracle, he does a complete work over Man can't quantify the, 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 miracular, uh, um, the miraculous with God. God is a marvel. When he does something, he does it completely. That's what he showed me in the vision. That's all these years later, as I remember that vision, I go, wow, God is a marvel. And he showed it to me in my life as he pulled me out of darkness, as I, as I went back into the world. They say you can't backslide. I sure enough backslide from that six-year-old to a 21-year-old who didn't care if he was alive or dead. I was, I, my heart was in the, the pit of hell, and I was a miserable wretch. And I, and I would say things and do things to hurt people on purpose because I was so miserable. And my own worldly friends who were just as bad as me wouldn't even hang out with me. That's how bad I got. But listen to this, Romans 5 and 1, therefore being justified by faith, just believe. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he broke down sin in the flesh. Hallelujah. By whom also we have access by faith unto this grace. Grace, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, God's sufficiency. Jesus told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Oh, there they come. And they're going to come hard. They came hard with me. I've suffered things not only that I went through, but what other people have to go through so I can reach for your soul. I suffered too tough. God knows what we can endure. And he put me through the business, not just for me, but for you. That's, that's why he made me a pastor now. Hallelujah. He says he called me to be a pastor. And I'm like, wow, it wasn't my first choice. I thought I wanted to be a teacher. No, you're going to be a pastor. I went through all of this stuff, not just for me, but for you, so I can reach for your soul. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. My pastor has a, 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 a lovely uh, um, way of looking at patience. A mother with one child, and you got a mother with 11 children. Now, if you take that mother with the 11 children, the mother with the one children says, babysit my child. She's not going to have a problem. She has patience. But if you take that mother with the one child and give her those 11 children, she's going to lose her mind that first week, I guarantee you, because she does not have the patience to handle that. Good, good analogy. And patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Hallelujah. My hope. I'm no longer ashamed of my Lord and Savior. People ask me. I tell them. I used to, oh, I'm a Christian. Don't hate me and, and, and sneak off. There's no power in that. There's no understanding in that. 
And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The love of God. The Holy Spirit is our ticket home. He is refining us. He is the Spirit that refines us. Thank you, Jesus. That is the new birth. He is the seed of God. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one will die, yet preventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But listen to verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I know that I was a no good dog. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Because he's in the grave. He's crucified. I'm no longer that person. You know, people that are in the flesh cringe when you say stuff like that. Oh, you were a dog. No, you were too. You were worthy of death, just like me. Oh, I was, oh, I was this. And you're trying to justify your own existence. It's not going to happen. We were all lost. We were all ungodly. God commended his love for us. Why? In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. You break the word atonement down. It is at one men. I am at one with God. All is well with my soul. My heart, the spirit of my inner man, is risen in the glory. I've seen it in a vision. I'm not going to back away from that. That's your spiritual baptism. And he is in me. I'm in him, and he's at me. My middle wall partition, sin in the flesh, has been done away with. It's now a temple. And I am at one with the spirit of the living God. I am at peace with God. I have joy with God. The devil comes against me. I brush him off. Raccoon, I trap it and I release it. I got a root canal. I pay for it. God has given me provisions to care for this one-time wretched sinner that had a stony heart that didn't care if he was alive or dead. Let's go to 1 Peter. I got just enough time to teach you scripture. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter 1 and uh, 1. 1 Peter, excuse me, 5 and 10. I write them on the screen. Write them down. If you can't get them down in time, go to Ustream. Go to Ustream. You can get them. 724. All the shows, the last 10 shows I do, you can get them for free. I don't know if you can download it. You pro if you're computer savvy, you probably can. You have my blessing. Take it. I don't care. This is free. But you'll find out that to truly get it, you're going to give yourself away. To truly get the victory, you're going to give yourself away. And everything you have is God's, but everything God has is yours. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful trade-off, I'll tell you what. 1 Peter 5 and 10. 1 Peter 5 and 10. But the God of all grace, he has it all. That, he has all sufficiency. There, nobody has anything but God. If God doesn't have it, you don't want it who had called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Christ, before Jesus, is a risen Savior. That spirit man. After that, he had suffered a while. Oh, you're going to go through it. I guarantee it. But you know what? Hang in there. Make you perfect. That's, 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 a, uh, that's I'll turn there real quick. James 3 and 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man and able to also to bridle the whole body. He can command this man to behave and he will because you got power. You got Holy Ghost power. Establish. Establish us how in the word? Strengthen. Strengthen with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's Ephesians 3 and 16. And settle you. Hallelujah. God is now settling me down. God is now settling me down. A life of conflict. A life of trial. A life of, of, of the devil coming against me with everything he's got. And I'm convinced he can't get it done now. He's had, he's had a chance since I was 17. He came against me hard from 17 on. And I'm convinced 
that God is able to keep me from the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. He's got nothing for me. You know, the shield of faith. I see him shoot his little lies. It's just like, oh, well, you know, you know, that was lame. You know, and he comes hard. Let me tell you what, you got to sure enough have the Holy Spirit. You got to sure enough be committed. But I tell you what, when you start walking in this life, all is going to be well with your soul. When you start living victoriously for your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you're going to see him stand up and be the Lord of your life. You call him Lord, you got you to expect that he wants to be exactly that, Lord. Lord of your life. And he will Lord over your life and teach you and nourish you. Not just have you to be a pew sitter. You've got gifts that God has placed inside you and you have got to start using them to see the fullness of God revealed in your life. You will be amazed at what he can do. God is just sitting there waiting to, to show himself strong on your behalf when your heart is perfect toward him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to leave you right now with my closing from Psalms 19, 12 through 14. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright. And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Thank you, Jesus. May the good Lord richly bless all your sincere efforts that you may lead a quiet and peaceful life that you can go out now and, and, and with confidence and say, you know what? I got a great understanding here. I'm going to live this life. Your understanding is living this life. When you see understanding, it means you're going out and showing people in a lost and dying world Christ in you. And they're going to embrace that. They're going to embrace it. Some won't. I already shared a testimony of one man that did not and how it wound up with that man. He was miserable. He was wretched. He had a, he had a meek and mild spirit. But that is not enough. you got to come to this word. you got to embrace it. In Jesus' name, thank you.